I literally have put on here saying, I would not be my friend this week. <laughs> Instead of posting a vlog today, I decided I would sit down and chat to you all about my first trimester because I am officially at 14 weeks now, so I'm past the first trimester, I'm past the like gross sick stage and I thought I'd sit down and just talk to you about like symptoms, cravings. I just thought it'd be fun to film this video and then look back on it if I have a baby again and the pregnancy might be completely different. I do just want to say before I start that this video is probably going to be too much information. I'm going to talk about poop, I'm going to talk about puke, I'm going to talk about mm, bodily functions and just like things that probably are a bit gross. So if you're not into gross this video is probs not for you. But if you are into gross then I have got an absolute treat for you. I should also say this video is probably going to be quite long because there's a lot to talk about because this is like over the time of three months and there's just so much happening. So maybe go and get like a cup of tea, a biscuit if you fancy it. Try not to get too annoyed by the sound of my voice because I do have a cold so I'm quite snotty. A few of you know that I have a condition called endometriosis. If you didn't know then I posted a whole video on my main channel about it so I'm going to link that in the box below. But just very quickly, endometriosis is where there's like growths in your ovaries or on your uterus and it affects a lot of people getting pregnant and some people can't get pregnant at all. So when I found out that I had endometriosis last September, my doctor just told me that if I was in a loving relationship, um, now was probably the time to start trying for a baby. We already knew that we wanted to have a baby because I wanted a baby from really young. David was the broodiest man I've ever known in my entire life. So, and we were engaged and we knew that like we were each other's person. So like him telling us that we needed to try wasn't really like a big pressure because we knew we wanted that anyway. Another thing with endometriosis is that your periods are like very sporadic and like you don't have a constant period sometimes you'll have a two day period some months you'll have a 10 day period and like they're so all over the place you never really know when they're coming so actually before i was diagnosed with endometriosis about two years before i downloaded this app called clue and my friend showed it to me actually and he is a male so i don't really know how he ever knew about this app but i had never heard of it and um, it's called Clue, I'm gonna get it up at the minute. On here you can, it has like the days of the month and you put in when you start your period. Oh my gosh, like here I had a period from the 25th of August until the 4th of September, which is almost two weeks. That was a really long one. So before I wanted to get pregnant, I used this app to just track my periods and keep an eye on them. But then when we wanted to get pregnant, it became so handy because I could just look on the blue bits and it would tell me the dates that I was ovulating and obviously it's not like perfect because mine was so random but it at least gave me like a gauge of kind of where my fertilization window was so I just I just followed that religiously even if you're not trying to get pregnant clue is just wonderful because it just helps you keep on track of everything so if you do want to get it I'm going to link it in the box below now I've talked about that I'm going to talk about some symptoms so basically it was like the first week of May I was meant to start my period in about a week kind of I remember just constantly getting stomach ache and I've watched so many pregnancy update videos and not once have I ever heard anyone talk about them needing the toilet as like a symptom. I always hear about people puking, I always hear about people feeling like nauseous, but I've never heard anyone talk about like the other exit. So like I just thought I had a stomach bug, <laughs> I was just like oh my god I feel so ill all the time. So then one day I was sat on the sofa and I was just like an absolute grump that day, I was just tired and pretty grumpy but I thought it was because my period was coming and then I had the thing again when I needed to go to the toilet and then I just sat there and I googled, sounds to be gross but I googled like diarrhea pregnancy symptom or something and all this stuff came up about how some people get really constipated when they're pregnant and some people are the absolute opposite and I was like, well, well, I mean, I'm definitely the opposite. So I went into the bathroom, 
you guys might have seen the video where I was taking the pregnancy test, that was that exact day. So I took the test and you guys know the rest, it said positive and I could not believe it. Because I really didn't think pooping was a pregnancy symptom. <laughs> For weeks four and five, the main thing I remember feeling was I had cramps all the time. It felt like my period was going to come any second. It was terrifying because I finally had got a positive test. And then every time I got a cramp, I was like, oh god, I'm going to start my period right now. But I think it's completely normal. You get cramps because like everything's expanding a bit and like stretching and getting into place. But even though you know all that stuff, it's so scary. And I was just getting cramps all the time. I forgot about this, but week five, yeah, week five was a bad week. <laughs> I just had the worst mood swings. I'm not so good with like an influx of hormones. I once had the coil put in and I had to get it straight out because of my hormones, I can't deal with them. I just like get really sad and then really angry and then really happy all at once and I'm quite a happy person. So for my moods to be like all over the place, it stresses me out. This one particular week, I, I hated myself. I was being so horrible to David. I was telling him off all the time and then I wanted cuddles and then he wouldn't cuddle me because I'd been nasty to him and then I'd cry because I just wanted a cuddle. <laughs> it was an absolute disaster. I literally have put on here saying I would not be my friend this week. <laughs> <laughs> also in week five, I just got exhausted. I laid on our sofa pretty much every day for about two weeks and I just napped constantly. I don't know how I was always so tired because I'd go to sleep here, I'd wake up at like half eight, I'd go into the lounge, sit on the sofa and fall to sleep again. <gasps> I remember one time <laughs> I actually managed to like get in the shower and and wash myself and then I was drying my hair and I had to take a nap. I was like, this is too much. Just drying my hair was like the biggest effort in the entire world. I was so tired all the time. From like week six, I started thinking that David didn't love me anymore. Like my emotions are so weird. Constantly through the day, I'd be like, do you still like me? Because I was being so lazy that I couldn't imagine how he'd ever still like me and my emotions are so sensitive and I just kept on asking him if he still liked me and is he sure and would he tell me if he didn't like me anymore because now he's stuck with me with a baby and he was just like whoa <laughs> whoa <laughs> I was like an actual psychopath so thank goodness that stopped at least I think it has one thing I feel like I've been very very lucky with is sickness like I really haven't been that sick I think I've been sick twice. One was around nine weeks and one was around 11 weeks. So I really, really haven't been that sick. Even though I haven't been sick sick, the nausea has been big time. I didn't want to eat a single thing, but I would be so hungry, but everything just seemed so gross. I definitely don't think I ate the healthiest in the first trimester, but I honestly just couldn't stomach anything. And I don't mean stomach anything because I was gonna puke, but just like, I just had this mental block on food, it was all so disgusting. And I'd really want certain stuff, and then I would really not want that thing. And then David would go and get something, and then by the time he got back, I didn't want it anymore. I don't know how he put up with me, to be honest. One of my very, very weird symptoms came along at like week seven. But I like constantly have the hottest feet. Like at night, it normally happens at night time, and it feels like they're on fire. I don't know why, there's probably some like scientific reason behind it, but they get so hot that I run into the bathroom and I just sit in, underneath the tap in the bath with the freezing cold water on and I just put my feet under the tap. Oh my god, I've actually put here. I'm not fussed about my tummy getting big, but because I'm so short at the moment I just look like a big chunky monkey. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been one of those sad days. <laughs> now that I've talked about symptoms, I'm going to talk about cravings. I didn't really have tons of cravings. I craved two things and they were very specific. I wanted potato salad all the time, which is very strange because I've never eaten potato salad. 
Like my mum used to make it at barbecues and that was like, I would stay clear of the potato salad because I thought it was gross. But for some reason one day I woke up and I was like, oh, I could have some potato salad, you know? And that stayed around for about three weeks. The other thing I constantly craved from about five weeks to 13 weeks was skips. I must have eaten about six bags of skips a day for a good week. Whenever anyone was eating, all I could think about was skips. Like, I would think about how crunchy they were, how sometimes the like prawn cocktail bits get stuck in the grooves, and like, I just want <laughs> my mouth's watering because I really want skips. <laughs> Oh, no wonder I was thinking that I was a chunky monkey because all I could eat was skips and potato salad. I ate skips yesterday and they weren't as appetizing, so I feel like I might have ruined them for the rest of my entire life, but they really provided me some great, great munching time during my first trimester, so I guess they'll always hold a special place in my heart. I've written down here changes in body. There really, really hasn't been that many changes in my body apart from my boobs are just like constantly growing forever and ever. I feel like they're never gonna end. But what, before I got pregnant, my boobs were a D and I am five foot one. So to have D boobs really isn't so fun. And that was like the one thing that I really didn't want to grow. I was like, maybe my body will just think they're already big enough. Like there's probs enough room in there for all the milk that's gonna happen. Maybe like God will bless me with not making my boobs grow. Did not happen. They started growing from about six weeks. And now all I can do is cram them in a sports bra. And they don't even fit in sports bras, they like pudge out the side. It's so gross. I'm 14 weeks, how big are they gonna get? I'll be like top heavy, just falling over, toppling over, because my bump will be heavy and my boobs will be ginormous. I really don't think I'm gonna be one of those glamorous pregnant women, that's for sure. Other than that, my body's not really changed that much. My bump's kind of coming in, but it's still just like a bit bloated and a bit pudgy. But I'm embracing it. I'm just telling everyone it's a bump, but actually I think it's all those skips I ate. I guess the last thing to do is to show you the bump. It really isn't much of a bump just yet. It definitely is more of a chub chub. But I, I just, just bear in mind there's a combination of baby and skips and potato salad. So it is a bit pudgy. I'm gonna show it to you anyway because I feel like it'll be fun to look back on. Um, so yeah, here is Bump. Something's going on, I'm not sure if it's Chub or if it's Bump, but that wasn't there before, so I think that is Bump. That's what it looks like at the moment. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really really hope you liked it. I know it was long and very chatty and probably a bit too much information, um, but I really do hope you liked it. If you did, then click the thumbs up. And I also wanted to tell you that instead of doing trimester videos for the rest of the pregnancy, each week, maybe on a Sunday or a Wednesday, I'm not sure what day yet, um, I'm gonna post like a weekly update of how things are going. It may not be symptoms related, it might just be to show you the bump, it might be to show you things we've bought, um, it might be to tell you how much of a psycho I'm being that particular week because of my hormones. I'm gonna call them bump dates because I feel like that's like a cool, trendy way to say a bump update. So um, look out for those if you're interested in finding out what's been going on each week. I'm gonna start that next week. Oh, actually, thank you so much for all of the support on the videos we've been posting. I think we went up like 30,000 subscribers in two weeks, which is insane. So if you're new, thank you so much for coming over and being a part of the journey. If you've been here for a while, oh my gosh, I am so excited that you're here for this and we finally made it. We made a baby! I think that's it. Sorry for chatting for so long, but there was a lot to cover. I love you guys and I'll see you very, very soon for another vlog. Bye!